this is Mrs. Reichelt and next up we're moving into bone markings. So not only are you going to have to memorize each of the bone names, you're going to have to memorize some of the bone markings associated with them. So let's talk about what it is to be a bone marking. So basically a bone marking is a surface feature of the bone. So bones aren't actually smooth um, material. They have a lot of ridges and depressions and cavities and indentations and projections coming off of them. And each of those has a specific function. So uh, those surface features provide attachment for muscles, tendons, and ligaments. In addition, they act as passageways for nerves and blood vessels. Uh, so there are a couple categories of bone markings. The first are projections or processes. Um, a projection or a process means that it's growing out from the bone surface. So anything that's going outward is going to be a projection. And then a depression or a cavity is going to be an indentation in a bone. Okay, so a, a hint that your book gives you, any bone marking that starts with a T is a projection, and then any bone marking that starts with an F except for facet are depressions. So hopefully that will help you once we get to memorizing these. So let's go through a couple little examples, and by the way, the, this is in your textbook. It is page 142, so I would go ahead and reference these. Um, I'll tell you the exact ones that you need to memorize as we go through labs, um, but just be aware of a lot of, um, just some of the terminology here. So a tuberosity is a large rounded projection and it may be roughened. So a tuberosity is a rounded projection like right here. A crest is a narrow ridge, so this forms a crest, okay? A trochanter is a very large, blunt, and irregularly shaped process, and a trochanter, an example is right here, okay, that makes up a trochanter. A line is a narrow ridge of bone, so a line, I guess I drew over it right here. There's a line that connects each of these trochanters. Uh, a tubercle is a small rounded projection or process. So a tubercle is going to be a small rounded projection. Uh, a tuberosity is going to be a larger rounded projection. And then an epicondyle is a raised area above a condyle. So an epicondyle is right here. We have another raised projection, so the epicondyle will be right above there. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of some of that and start off with a spine. A spine here is a sharp, slender, and often pointed projection. So there is a spine right there. And then a process is a bony prominence, so that's the spinosis process. So you can see that there's lots of different markings um, associated with bones. Let's go ahead and go through a couple more. I knew you were going to be super excited, so that's why I put two of, two of these slides in. Okay, so a head is a bony expansion that's carried on a narrow neck. So this would be an example of a head. A facet is a smooth, nearly flat, articular surface. So these are going to be facets. A condyle is a rounded articular projection. So there's a condyle of the mandible there. Um, then a ramus is an arm-like bar of bone. So let's find our ramus, which is right here, okay. Um, a meatus is a channel-like passageway, so there's one right there. A sinus is a cavity filled with bone, um, can be filled with air or lined with a mucous membrane. So here's some sinuses, I think you know where your sinuses are. Um, a fossa is a shallow basin-like depression in a bone. So here is a fossa. And once we actually get the bones out in lab, you'll be able to feel them and see them, and you'll be able to really see what they look like better than in these diagrams. A fissure is a narrow stick-like opening. So here's an orbital fissure there. And then a foramen is 
a, basically a round hole or an oval sometimes. So a foramen is going to be, that one's kind of covered up, so we'll do the other one right there. Um, so that really wraps up all of the bone markings. Um, these will be very beneficial to know, especially when we start getting the bones out and you'll be able to um, look at them, feel them, see how they look, see exactly where they're at when we um, are identifying bones.